All right, 2 Corinthians chapter number 12 and verse number 1. It is not expedient for me, doubtless, to glory. I will come to visions and revelations of the Lord. I knew a man in Christ above 14 years ago, whether in the body I cannot tell, or whether out of the body I cannot tell, God knoweth. Such an one caught up to the third heaven. And I knew such a man, whether in the body or out of the body, I cannot tell, God knoweth. How that he was caught up into paradise and heard unspeakable words, which it is not lawful for a man to utter. Of such an one will I glory, yet of myself I will not glory, but in mine infirmities. For though I would desire to glory, I, will, I shall not be a fool, for I will say the truth. But now I forbear, lest any man should think of me above that which he seeth me to be, or that he heareth of me. And lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. For this thing I besought the Lord thrice, that it might depart from me. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then am I strong. Father, in thy name, this is your word, Holy One. Grant me this morning that I preach it. Fill me with the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You can be seated. I don't know how you can imagine how I felt when they got up over there and started singing about heaven. When I'm preaching a message about the third heaven in 2 Corinthians 12 and verse number 2. I do not believe in coincidence. I believe there's an almighty pervading God who rules and reigns in the hearts of men. I believe he's a sovereign, eternal being from everlasting to everlasting. He is God. I'm a little creature of time that showed up for a while. I'm here today. I'm gone tomorrow. But thanks be unto God for his unspeakable gift, for I know whom I have believed. I'm persuaded he's able to keep that which I've committed to him against that day. Here was a stoner. Here was a killer. Here was a murderer. Here was a man who lived a wicked, godless, religious life. Yet the Bible said on the road to Damascus, he came face to face with Almighty God. And my friend, when he came face to face with Almighty God, it changed this man completely. He was never the same again. He was very dedicated to his religion. He was well read in his religion. He, my friend, had reached the height, the pinnacle in his religion. He was absolutely and completely certain that he was right in his religion. But my friend, his religion was dead wrong. There are a lot of people out there today who are dedicated to their religion. They've been raised in a certain church, baptized when they were children, certain today that they are on the right way, but nothing inside their heart has ever changed. They're still the same. They've always been. They're trusting in their religion. They're trusting they're trusting in their church. They're trusting in their priest. They're trusting in a confession of faith. They're trusting in an apostolic confession. They're trusting in some kind of an accolade that somebody has laid upon them from their religion. And my friend, that's what they cling to. They embrace throughout all the days of their life. That, my friend, is their hope their heaven, their future, their eternity. It's all about their religion. My friend, you can very easily tell the difference between one who knows Christ and one who does not. You talk to a man, and my friend, when he begins to tell you about his church, he'll talk to you about his preacher. He'll tell you about his work. He'll tell you about what great things his church has done. He'll tell you about all the buildings they've built. He'll tell you how great his ministry is. He'll tell you how wonderful the outreach of his church is. But he'll never get around to the Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. You talk to some old soil, low down dog, been drug out of hell. He tells you about Jesus. He looks you in the eye and he tells you how good he's been to him. 
He tells you how great he is. Hi, my friend, every day of his life, he becomes sweeter to his soul. How that he longs for the day that he'll see him. And my friend there, be with him throughout eternity. He talks about how he changed him from what he used to be into what he is now. He talks about how at one time he was laden with sins, but now they're all forgiven, they're all gone. That man knows the Lord Jesus Christ. I don't know what he hangs on himself. I don't know what kind of church he belongs to. I don't know what kind of religion he may be part of. I don't know what kind of culture he might have come out of. But my friend, the most important thing is this. Does he know the Lord Jesus Christ? Does he know that he's passed from death into life? Does he know that he's a child of God and no longer a child of hell? Saul of Tarsus was that kind of man. He was as good as they come in his religion. He was dedicated to it. He sold out to it. He lived for it day in, day out. That's all he had on his mind. For him to live was to take those of that way and take them bound to Jerusalem and there they'd be stoned to death and put to death. That's what he lived for. That's what his life was about till he met God. When a man meets God, it does something to him. It changes him. His insights begin to move about. He begins to hear what he never heard before. His eyes can see deeper than he could ever see before. He hears with an ear he never had before. His heart and his soul has begun to move. He realizes there's another world that he knew nothing about. It's a spirit world that runs much deeper than that physical world that he's part of. And no longer, no sooner is he born again by the grace of God that he realizes unequivocally that about him there are thousands, yea, millions that don't know a thing about what he's talking about. Yet they go to church every Sunday. They carry all my friend of the accoutrements of religion. They're all wrapped up in their religion, but they don't know the Lord. Saul of Tarsus on the road to Damascus met one he didn't know. He thought he was serving him, but he wasn't serving him. He thought he knew him, but he didn't know him. He thought he was living for him, but he wasn't living for him because he didn't know him. But there on the road to Damascus, he met him face to face. From that day, his life changed. It was no, there was no mountain he wouldn't climb, no fence that he wouldn't scale. No no sea that he wouldn't cross. There was nowhere he wouldn't go. He said, for to me to live is Christ and to die is gain. To preach the gospel was his burning ambition. It was to carry Christ to the ends of the world where they'd never heard his name before. His job was to preach Christ. He said to the church at Corinth, he said, I came to your midst knowing nothing but Christ and him crucified. That's what he lived for. That's who he lived for. That's what he was about. You wouldn't be around that man five minutes and he would be telling you about Jesus. He'd tell you what he did for him. had brought him out of darkness into life. And so this man said there outside the gates of Lystra we read about it in the book of Acts they carried him out and stoned him. The Bible said stoned him to the point of death. We do not know. Nobody can tell you how far the apostle went. He might have died. He might have been like Lazarus lying stone cold dead under the stones outside Lystra. It could have been there as they stood about him and they said one more heretic dead. We're rid of him. We're shed of him. We're finished with him. And the great apostle lay outside Lystra there on a dirty street on the side of a dusty road with the blood running down his face and my friend his body swelling up from the licks that he'd taken but his spirit ascended out of his body. It was in 2 Corinthians 12 he said I knew a man in Christ above 40 14 years ago, whether in the body or out, I cannot tell. He ascended up above us. He went higher than you could ever go. No jet aircraft could ever reach where he went to. He went through a door. He rose up higher, higher he went. And the Bible said he began to say this in 2 Corinthians 12. I saw things unspeakable. What he saw, no man can say with words. What he heard, no ear could ever understand. What he, my friend, understood that day, he could simply say it was unlawful maybe when he was caught up into the third heaven he saw that old beggar that had died there at the gate of the city and he's no longer a beggar he might have seen that little girl that got killed in a car wreck and she's no longer dead for him she's up there in glory he might have seen that one that lay suffering for a long time and my friend left this old world and went into the presence of God surely about him he saw many that he knew he knew them by name he knew their face and he might have been surprised at some that he saw he might have been surprised at some he didn't see. That's the way heaven's going to be. Down here in this whole world, everybody's got it all figured out. Who the holy and the righteous are. I want to tell you something, friend. He that hath the Son hath life. He that hath not the Son hath not life. I don't care if you're the biggest man in your religion. I don't care if the biggest man in your country. I don't care if you're the richest man in the world. I don't care if you're the smartest of the smartest. He that hath the Son hath life. 
He that hath not the Son hath not life. And my friend the Apostle had him. He had him in his soul. He had him in his spirit. He had him in his being. He embraced him. He loved him. He was really saved. And it really changed him. He said, I saw a man in Christ, whether 14 years ago, whether in the body or out, I cannot tell such an one caught up into the third heaven. That's the way it is, they tell us. When you leave the body, some have left the body and come back. Somebody said, I put no stock in all of that. Then throw 2 Corinthians 12 out. For the Bible said he came back. And when he came back, he wrote about it. He told you what happened to him. Caught up into the third heaven. What's that, preacher? Well, he said in the book of Revelation, I saw a new Jerusalem coming down from God out of heaven. It has streets of pure, transparent gold. Walls of jasper and gates of pearl. And the greatest thing about that city is that the Lamb is the light thereof. Jesus is in the middle of it. That's what makes it wonderful. I don't care anything about a place. I'm not interested in gold. My friend, pearls don't excite me. If you want to really know the truth, I'm not looking forward to an eternity of riches. What I want to see is God. I want to see the one that went to the tree for me. And that's what's going to make heaven heaven. For if he loved me at the cross, he'll love me in eternity. If he loved me there, he'll love me in the future. And it'll be one that'll have pure love. You ever had pure love? You ever had righteous love? You ever had holy love lay on your soul? You ever had somebody take you for just what you are and love you for just what you are and change you from a child of hell to a child of God? And that's what heaven's about. It's about purity. It's about holiness. It's about righteousness. It's about pure light. And that's what I'll see one day. I've seen plenty of darkness. I've lived in plenty of hell. I've seen rottenness to its very core. I know all about perversion. I've been around the wicked. I'm going to where it's holiness. I'm going where it's righteous. I'm going where it's pure. Amen. I'm going to a land where it won't come into the gate. I'm going to a place where you'll never hear a cross word. You'll never see a dirty deed. You'll never see death. You'll never see lying. You'll never see a graveyard. You'll never see a hospital. You'll never see a sick folk. You'll see the holiness of God poured out on his creature. You'll see the righteousness of God as it reigns in glory. What heaven heaven's not a place heaven's a person it's just like salvation salvation is not a thing it's not a doctrine it's not a church it's a person amen the apostle said, I knew a man in Christ about 14 years ago, whether in the body or out, I cannot tell. What I can tell you right now, I'm in mine. But I'm going to tell you something else. I'm going to leave it one day. I'm going to leave it, my friend, and I won't look back. When the day comes that he calls my name and comes to get me, I'll be ready to go. I'm not getting older. I'm getting closer. I'm not dying. I'm living. You may be going down. I'm going up. You waiting for the great graveyard and the undertaker. I'm looking for a shout and the glory of God and an eternity in heaven. I'm already alive. I already have eternal life. I started living in 1973 when he changed me from a child of hell to a child of God. There's a bunch of them on the other side I want to see. I know them. I've known a lot of people. I've carried a lot of bodies to the graveyard. There's no doubt in my mind I know who they are and where they are. I I'll tell you right now, I don't doubt it for a minute. They're in glory. I've carried some out to the graveyard I had serious doubt about. I wondered where they were. I got up and tried to say some comforting things and talk about the greatness of God. But in my heart and in my soul, I had de serious doubt of where they were. Your tears can't put them in heaven. I may be your daddy, but that won't send him to heaven. It may be your mama, but it won't send him to heaven. Or your husband or your wife. But I'll tell you one thing, my friend. I will see many of them again. But after I've seen them, there's one I want to see. I'm going to see him. I came from a dark place. I came out of a hole. I was raised in hell. All I ever ate and all I ever drank, all I ever knew was pure hell. One day this old boy, born and bred in hell, brought up out of the dark pit of hole, of any hole you can imagine. I'm going to walk closer to the light like you've never seen it before. I'm going to see light like you've never known. I'm going to see the light 
that permeates the darkness. There are no shadows. It even goes around the corners. I'm talking about pure light. I'm talking about holiness. And now when that day comes and my spirit is made free, I'm set free from this body. I soar and sail into the presence of a holy God. It's coming. It's coming. That day's coming. I sure as you hear me, I'm going there. The closer I get, the lighter it'll get. The closer I get, the purer it'll be. The closer I draw to him, the holiness will flood my soul until he unveils himself to this old boy hell. And he's brought me to heaven. And he stood me before him. And he says, enter in, my son, into the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Oh, my friend, I know where I'm going. I may not be here tonight. I may leave this afternoon. My wife may be a widow before the sun comes up in the morning. But make no mistake about it. You'll never bury me. You'll never carry me to the graveyard. You won't have anything to do with it. I'm fra- I'm sorry. I won't be at my funeral. I'll be gone. Amen. Amen. You can bury bodies all you want to. You're not going to bury me. You got no control over that. I'll be gone. And the Bible said to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Present with the Lord. My mind soars up into eternity. I begin to look about me and think to myself, there is no end to this place. There was no beginning with it. There is no end to it. I'm in eternity. All that I've lived in this life, in this world, I've always thought about time. I've thought about how time takes its toll on the human body. My old body got up this morning. My neck was hurting. My back was hurting. My shoulder was hurting. My body didn't tell me yesterday it was going to do this to me today. It waited till Sunday morning. I got up and here it is. It hits me with all that. I'll tell you something, buddy. Ain't me. I'm just in it. But up there in glory, you look about you and what you see is eternal. Everything's going to be there forever. Nothing's going to change. If they're there, they're going to stay there. If they made it to that place, you're looking off into eternity. Look as far as you can. Take it in. Take in the breadth of it, the depth of it, the width of it the height of it. Look at it with your soul. Now look at it with your spirit. Let it sink in to one time what eternal life is all about. Look down in front of you a million years and think of what you're going to be doing a million years from now. You ain't even started. You're in a land that is fairer than day. Wow! By faith I can see it afar. Glory to God. This old boy said, I'm born again. I'm washed in the blood. I know my name is in heaven. I know whom I have believed. Take it in, friend. Look as far as you can. Look off down into the walls of eternity. There are none. Look to the end of it. There is none. Look to the bottom of it. Can't be found. Look as high as you can look. And there's nothing to see but eternity. In plain words, it's like a ball. It's a sphere forever and ever in every direction you could possibly go. He's nowhere extent to his kingdom. And this is what he gave you. I give unto them eternal life and they shall never perish. You got that life this morning? Do you have eternal life? How many of you know what I'm talking about? There's somebody alive in you. Wasn't in there before. Somebody moved inside you and changed you like you never had been before. You started living a new life, walking a new walk. Talking a new talk. Your life, your songs changed. Your desires changed. Your friends changed. Places you go to changed. They couldn't understand it, but you sought out somebody like yourself. You started looking from that day at that very moment. There's got to be somebody else around here like me, crazy as I am. Maybe I am crazy to the world. Then you found one. You found a soul just like yours. They talked about Jesus. They looked for Jesus. They loved Jesus. Jesus was what they lived for. And then you realize to yourself, that's what fellowship was about. I'm not the only one. And you're not the only one. Yeah, there are millions just like you. Some here, some there. And one day, I'm going to walk on streets of pure transparent gold. Hallelujah! 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 You might, my friend, wonder where you're going to spend eternity. Well, let me say this to you. You'll never spend it. For eternity has no end. 
You may spin in it, but you'll never spend it. Don't be so unfortunate after such a rise in death, not knowing what awaits you. Because if that's how you die, I would say without question, you're going to hell. And that's another message altogether. Oh, what a thing. Oh, what a thought that you came this close, that you sat in the congregation of the living, that you heard the word of God, that you were around the Holy Ghost, that the light was flooding down in your soul, that you heard the songs of Zion. You got so close, so close, so close. Yet, my friend, you didn't come in. You didn't ask him in. You didn't believe on him. You didn't receive him. To receive the Son, friend, is to receive life. Amen. To receive the Son is to receive eternal life. And of course, a million things. To receive the Son is to receive forgiveness. But you didn't do it. You got up and you walked out where you felt more comfortable. Because right now you may be feeling uncomfortable. And if you're feeling uncomfortable right now, it's because there's something not right. Friend, if you're a born-again believer, you've got an excitement built up in your soul. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Say, preacher, Lord's going, the, the world's going to come to end 30 minutes. Well, glory to God, let's start singing. <laughs> Amen. Woo! <laughs> let's sing. <laughs> Say, it's all going to be over with in a half hour. Well, let's pray and sing and praise and glory to God. <laughs> Amen. You mean, preacher, they're not somewhere you need to run to and something you need to do? No, I'm, I'm ready. Let's go. Let's go. I'm serious as I can be. Let's go. And you have you here left behind you have all that stuff out there that belongs to me? I'll tell you where I live. Go get it. Throw it in your truck and haul it off. Well, I don't need it. Amen. But if you're not ready, you're worried, aren't you? Why do you do that? How many of you born again believers in here raise your hand and say, I know, preacher, he died for them, he loves them, and he'll save them. We're not your enemies. We're your friends. We're not in here to rip you off, take what we can from you. We're in here to tell you the truth. Tasted death for every man. Red man, yellow man, black man, white man, all the same. Christ didn't die for red men, yellow men, black men, white men. Christ died for sinners. Amen. Amen. He's not a black man's God and a white man's God and a red man's God and a yellow man's God. He's the God of born again sinners, born again believers. Father, in thy name, I'm done. Hallelujah, holy to thy name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, blessed, sweet, holy one. Thank you. Glorify thyself now in thy sweet name we pray.